The sun rises on the wasteland. Life starts to stir as the day begins. Creatures, large and small, have called the wasteland home for centuries. Human stories have been passed down and lived out in front of our eyes. Little attention, however, is paid to the animals, plants, and terrain of this wild wasteland. I'm Mantis, and this is the Wild Wasteland. Deep in the Commonwealth, things are already starting to buzz. Just outside Lexington, on most days, we can find many. We'll take it from here, Mantis. The wasteland has its share of strange creatures, wild plants, and even talking animals. Somehow, despite the destruction caused by the Great War of 2077, wildlife has not only persevered, it has thrived. It could be argued that most species post-war are doing much better than their pre-war counterparts these days most growing to unbelievable sizes, or even getting strange pseudo-superpowers from the side effects of too much radiation. Edna and I have seen a lot of these creatures up close and personal. That's right, Edna, a little too close sometimes. In this series, I will be bringing you closer to the wildlife of the wasteland exploring how these creatures live day to day, diving into what made them what they are, and asking questions about their ancestors. Not all of the wasteland's animal life is as social to humans as dogs and cats. I had heard back west that cats were extinct. I guess my source wasn't as reliable as I thought. Unless they all have been hiding in the Commonwealth. I had only seen them in old hollow tapes. Many people hunted cats for food because they were an easy prey, leading to low population. Dogs were spared that fate, though many have turned feral. It is not uncommon to find dogs as companions to humans. Post war, dogs have grown much larger than their pre war ancestors and are, for the most part, comparable to pre-war wolves in size. Some dogs have even found themselves ingrained in folklore like dog meat, the faithful companion of the vault dweller. Life blooms all over the wasteland, even the desert of the Mojave, with its rough dust storms and treacherous mountain ranges, hosts many forms of non-human life. Contrary to what you may believe, it's not all a desert out there. You can even find snow if you look hard enough. The Mojave is home to some of the deadliest creatures known to the wastes. Of course, the whole wasteland is dangerous, but nothing stings like a cazador. Giant mutated tarantula hawk spider wasps dreamt up in a fever dream by Dr. Boris in the Z14 Pepsinae DNA splicing lab of Big Mountain. These Commonwealth blood bugs don't seem so bad after seeing Cazadors. 
Austin is no stranger to creepy crawlies. Nothing worse than waking up to find that a rad roach has stumbled into your food supply. I had to throw out three boxes of dandy boy apples. These pests extend across the entire wasteland, even down in the capital wasteland. You can still find great American cockroaches that have been mutated by the radiation from the Great War, making life miserable for humans. Tribals have been using the innards of roaches to treat radiation poisoning for decades, so I guess they do serve a purpose. The bigger problem in DC, well, despite the mutants, are the Mirelurks. Big, mutated Chesapeake Bay blue crabs that pack a mean pinch. They don't take kindly to people rummaging through their territory and are not afraid to use force to show it. The ones in the capital wasteland don't hold a candle to some of the ones I have seen in the Commonwealth. They make death claws look small. Mirelurks aren't nearly as bad as some of the stories I have heard coming from Appalachia. Now, Edna, that wasn't very country roads of you. I have heard tales of mysterious cryptids and flying beasts. Some of them must hold some weight because they have been passed down from locals since about two decades after the Great War. That's a long time. Enough of the old wives' tales. It's time to dust off the old armor, Edna. A small settlement nearby has been having problems with something big. But that is a story for another day. I hope you've enjoyed the first episode, or the prologue rather, of The Wild Wasteland. If you want to support the series more directly, you can check out the YouTube channel membership and Patreon links below. We also have some stylish merch if you're more into that kind of thing. Thank you so much for watching and please consider telling me what you thought about this in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed it, share it with your friends. This is a new series that we're trying to get off the ground and it needs all the help it can get. Thank you again. It has been Mantis. Uh, I gotta testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, you gon' trust the sky. You gon' trust the sky, baby girl. Testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, you gon' trust the sky.